In this video, I'm going to show you how to knit an intarsia. Intarsia is a form of color work in which you knit in blocks of color. Unlike bare aisle and stranded color work in which all colors are carried throughout the work, in intarsia you work in color blocks. So you would knit the white and then the white would be dropped, then you would knit red and drop the red, and then again knit in white. The back side of intarsia will show where you have twisted your yarns in order to close any gaps. The pattern that I'm referring to in this can be downloaded. It's my pattern. I'll put a little link information in the video description box here on YouTube, so feel free to download it and knit away. Okay, so about the chart. In, you're gonna re in something like this even, you're going to wind up adding in several different sections of new yarn for the same color. In this case, mind you this blue, I've decided to knit it with blue just so that we, you can see it better, but this would normally be white. You would have one section of white here you would come up with, then you would switch to red or you would add in a red, then you would add in another white, which would be worked in all the way to up to the very top of the heart. After, when you come up like this, you're working white and then red and then white. And when you come across, you're going to work that last row of red. Then you drop the red and you'll add in a third section of white, just very small because you don't need very many stitches in there at all. And then you'll add in a second strand of red. And then once you get to the very top, all those of uh, all the extra strands that you have going here, which at this point will be one, two, three, four, five, will then become one again, and you'll knit on with the white. Okay. The other thing that you need to know is twisting the yarn. When in doubt, twist the yarn. Always twist the yarn on vertical color changes. That would be where um, you're not creating any slant in your color. When you create a right slant in your color change, you will always twist your work. When you create a left slant, you do not have to twist your work. In fact, I think it's better if you don't twist on a left slant because it tends to distort the stitch just a little bit. So with a right slant color change, you're going to be, your color is going to change, it's, it's going to shift one to the um, one to the right from where it exists underneath. And with a left slant, your color change is going to switch one to the left. So I'll show you how that works as we go along. Hopefully you'll be able to follow. And I didn't just confuse the heck out of you. Okay. So for the very first row, I'm knitting across on the odd side row. I've labeled this as one. I'm going five, and then I'm, and then I'm adding a red, and I'm adding a blue. Now, I'm showing you how to add in this yarn. And most people will probably show you how to do the intarsia when it's all pretty and started already. Well, you know what? Starting intarsia is just not pretty, <laughs> okay? Because uh, those stitches get really loose and you're going to see that and I want you to see that. Okay, we're going to add in red. I'm going to leave myself a length of tail that I can weave in at the end. Make sure you do that. I'm just going to hold that yarn, the new yarn, against my right hand needle so I can create some tension here and then I'm just going to purl it in and then drop it and now I'm going to add in the blue and again I'm going to hold that with this extra tail yarn left there against my right needle and purl in the blue or if you're on the knit side you would knit in we're going to purl in okay so now I've added two colors and they're not attached we're going to attach them in this next row here and when I say not attached you can see that red is just kind of kind of hang there all by itself. Okay, so now I'm going to knit across on row two and I'm going to encounter my very first right slant and my very first left slant. So this time I'm only going to knit four over to the color change. And now since I need to take the existing color in the row below and move it one to the right, I'm creating a right hand slant. Always twist the right hand slant. So when you go to twist, all you do is take the old color and place it over the new color. So old over new and then continue to knit. When you knit into 
that very first one when you come back across your row, it's going to be extremely loose. And I'm sure you can see those just going bonkers there. And that's because they're not attached to anything. Don't worry about it. Try and keep your tension good on the next stitches. And even that, don't worry about so much because in the end you're just going to get that all straightened out. And I'll show you that. Now I'm on a left-hand slant. Left-hand slant because the color that's underneath already exists. So it's slanting to the left because I'm moving it one to the left of where it was. So I'm creating a left slant. This time I'm not going to twist my yarn. So I'm going to leave the red hanging out here and I'm just going to knit with the white. Now in the next row we're going to encounter the first vertical color change like what you see here. Vertical color changes are always twisted. So, I'll show you how to do that again. So again, I'm going to let my old yarn hang over my new yarn, old over new, and then continue with the new color. Again, I'm going to color change to the blue. Oops, and make sure you grab the right end. Don't accidentally work in with the tail. <laughs> so I have the red is over the blue, and I'm going to knit. And you can call it, if you, in your mind, whatever works for you, you can call it twisting, you can call it locking, you can call it trapping, any different way you want to call it. Now I'm going to create the next. Uh, right hand slant because I'm now working row four. So this time I'm only going to work three blue and again I want my color to shift one to the right. So when I'm switching, when I'm, when I'm shifting the color below one to the right, I'm creating a right hand slant. So I want to twist my yarn. So I'm placing the old over new and then I'll knit. And we're going to come out one further than the than that same color below. So I'm creating a left slant here. So I'm not going to twist my yarn. And I'm just going to continue to knit. And that's how you do the locking um, or twisting of the yarn. Now, when you're all done with your work and you go back, you're going to look at that and you're going to think to yourself, oh my gosh, that looks absolutely horrible. Well, all you have to do is just straighten this out a little bit by tugging on your tail ends and, uh, and, and putting everything back into place where they should be. Once you've, um, once you've gotten them to where they look right, like this, see how much better that looks already? I just gave them a little tug. You're going to weave in the ends to the right. Always begin weaving in your ends to the right. And that's going to pull the legs, and when I mean legs, I mean these guys right here, your V's, pull it, it's going to pull it to the left on the right side, so on the back you want to weave in to the right. And that's how you do intarsia. Next video hopefully I'll have some good extra tips for you on uh, working with all these strands. Thanks a lot. Bye.